If you want to learn more about Juno Space and all the awesome things it can do, sign up for our Juno Space Essentials course. For full details, just visit juniper.net slash courses and search for JSE in the keyword search box. Now let's get to your Learning Byte. Welcome to the Learning Byte on Juno Space CLI Configlets. I'm Steve Weaver. I'm a content developer with Juniper Education Services. First, let's start by asking the question, what is a configlet? Well, a configlet is a tool that comes with Junospace. The goal is to make the configuration and modification of your configurations easier. Configlets are created by taking a CLI configuration or a chunk of a CLI configuration and replacing key parts with variables. Where would you use a configlet? Well, a couple of cases. One is if you have admins who are not real familiar with Junos and they're doing uh, simple tasks, you can set up a configlet and they don't need to know much about Junos and they can just fill in the form, apply the configlet, and away you go. It keeps it real simple. The second place where you might use a configlet where they become real useful is if you're doing very repetitive tasks. If you are applying a similar configuration to a lot of different devices or maybe applying a lot of changes to a lot of interfaces within the same device. Here you can see down the bottom right hand corner a sample configuration where we have a simple interface and rather than the interface itself we've got a variable here called interface and rather than the description we've got a variable DESC for description and you can apply that configuration but in place of those variables fill in the blank with your own information and we're going to show you how to do that but before we get started let's give you some background knowledge CLI configlets are based on velocity templates velocity templates is a, a language a templating language created or sponsored by apache.org it's a java based templating language similar to Java server pages in philosophy and kind of analogous to PHP. It is a sophisticated language. Uh, it can do loops and if statements for flow control. We're not going to get into it that deep, so the one thing you'll want to pay attention to is the dollar signs. That's how you tell that it's a variable, is with that dollar sign in front of a keyword. If you want more information, go check out velocity.apache.org. There you can get the full specifications on Velocity templates. All right, let's create one. To create it, the first thing you do is you go out and grab the CLI configuration that you want to use as a template or a snippet or chunk of it. Um, you don't need the whole thing. Then what you do is you paste that into the editor um, adjust the parameters, you know, create your variables and save it. And then you apply your configlet. And so we're going to go through and show you how to do that. First, let's start by going to our VSRX that we'll be using today. Here you see our interface that we have configured, the GE000, our management interface. And we want to add an interface to it, but we're going to use this interface as the basis for our template. And so I've already copied this and I want to go and show you the configlet. And for just time's sake, I'm not going to type this whole thing in, but I'm going to show you what I've done. So here is Juno Space and over here on the left hand side I've went down to configlets. And in configlets it does come with some sample configlets. This is one I've created called basic interface configuration and when you go in to edit it you'll get the same screen as if you were creating a new one. It comes up and says alright give your new configlet a name and I've called it basic interface config um, given it a category I've made up of interfaces you do need to select what type of devices it's going to run on um, in this case we're running on VSRX's so I'm choosing this. Um, the context is 
you can look at it, you can choose between logical context, a global context, or a physical interface context. Um, we're using a logical context, and to get more in-depth into that as to which one, if you have questions on which one you should use, uh, check out the technical publications on Juniper's website. The reference number is, well, I just gave it one. This is, again, something you can choose. Give it a description. And then let's talk about these three options down here at the bottom. The execution type. If you're going to apply this configuration change to a single device at a time, then you're going to want single execution. If you're going to apply it to multiple devices, then you're going to want grouped execution. You've got some preview options that it can show you the parameters and the configuration that's going to be applied before it applies it. And then post view, after it applies it, it can show you what parameters were applied and the resulting configuration both. Down here at the bottom is where you can see the editor. And I've pasted in the configuration that we just saw from the VSRX. And I'm going to zoom in on this just a little bit. What you can see is I've taken out the device name and substituted it with the variable, the interface name. And the unit number, I've left the word unit there, but taken the number out and replaced it with another variable called unit number. And then same with IP address. Notice that I did leave the semicolon there at the end. And that's all I've done to the configuration is I've just taken out three key pieces of information and replaced them with variables that all start with a dollar sign. And the editor does the rest. When you hit next, it automatically creates most of this information. There's a couple of these fields, the regex value, uh, default value, and order that I have added. So let's go take a look at some of these. click on unit number and I'm going to hit edit and here's the parameter that it pulled from the configuration the display name I typed in and the description I typed in and I just put this in here as an example so that the users know we don't want you to type in unit zero we just want you to type in zero for parameter uh, type I specified text field other options are a selection in this case, you can actually specify a range of values to choose from. You can also have invisible fields, password fields, and confirmation. In some cases, this XPath value can be very useful. Say, for example, you were going to configure a new interface, but you didn't know what interfaces you had to create, to set up. Um, you can set this up so that it'll go out to the device and pull a list of available interfaces to be configured. And you can actually customize it to the point of finding those interfaces that haven't been configured. It's a little more complicated than what we're going to get into today. Here I, I've specified a default value of zero. You don't have to have a default value, but when we run the script it's going to make it a little easier. And down here at the bottom the order is 20. What that means is you can put in whatever number you want. Lower numbers get shown first. So if you have a whole series of values you want somebody to fill in, you can actually specify the order in which the user will see those values. And I've been incrementing by 10, so this will be the second one that users will see. And you can see over here on the right-hand side, the first thing, number 10, is going to be the interface name, followed by the unit number, and then the IP address. Uh, let me explain this regex value here. For the unit number, uh, 0 hyphen 9 is a regex that says, hey, the only values the user can enter here are numeric values. If you try and put a letter in there, it's going to complain. Um, and so you can set up for IP addresses, you can go and you can get the regex values that will limit it to dotted decimal notation and require that you put in a valid IP address. All right, when we're ready to run it, we go in ahead and hit. At this point, I've got two VSRXs up and running, and I can choose which one I want to apply it to. I'm going to click the first one, and as soon as I click it, down here at the bottom is our form. And here are the values. We've got our interface name, and 
I've got a default value set to GE001 and we can click in here and change it to whatever we want. We've got a unit set to zero, again we can change it. And for the subnet I'm working on, this IP address will work fine. And again, you just type in what you want. And I've put in descriptions and examples so that users will know what format I'm looking for. Then again, down here at the bottom, I can hit validate. And it's going to go out and check and make sure it works. It says it's successful. And now I can apply that. Or I need to hit next. When I hit next, it shows me what it's going to look like and we can see that it's a substituting the correct interface, correct unit number, and IP address with the subnet mask. All right. And then we can hit apply and up here at the top we can see that it's in progress. It takes just a few seconds to do its thing. It comes down and now it's showing us the changes that it made and the resulting configuration that was applied. Pretty slick, huh? So let's go verify it. If we switch back over to where we were and we show interfaces. Now we have two interfaces and they're both configured. Um, you can make these configlets as complicated as you want. You know, you could add in descriptions, you could add in your firewall settings, um, you know, however you want to do it. But I just wanted to take a simple one so you could get the idea of what they can do and the process of setting them up. So today in this Learning Byte, we showed you how to go in and pull in a CLI configuration modify it by adding in variables, modify the parameters, save it, and then how to go in and apply that configuration to a Juniper device. Uh, I think configlets are a very powerful tool with a lot of potential. And I hope this has given you something useful that you can take and apply with what you're doing. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.